Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kerry and today I am bringing you my spring book unhaul. So these are all books that um, I have recently had a bit of a sort out of my bookshelves and these are ones I've decided not to keep. Um, some of them ones I read during the first half of this year and decided not to keep. Um, and others are ones that I've just said to myself, realistically, I'm not going to read these books. Um, so uh, yeah, so let's just kick off. The first book actually is one where I've just bought a much nicer edition. Um, it's my favourite ever book, um, but my copy was a cheap charity shop paperback and that's Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. It's the 80th anniversary of this book this year, so I've bought the lovely 80th anniversary special edition version because it's just so beautiful. Um, so while I'm sad to see this one go, I've got a much nicer copy of this book now. Um, yeah, so I don't need this one anymore. Um, the next chunk of books are all ones that I've read this year and decided I won't reread. I'm quite strict with myself because I don't have a lot of space, so if I rank a book three stars or less on Goodreads, I won't keep it because I'm unlikely to reread it. Um, at some point I will do a video explaining my ranking system, brief as it that will be, um, but suffice to say I don't have room for books that I'm not going to reread, so if it's three stars or less it goes. Um, so a couple of these you will have seen in my June wrap up, um, and so I'm just going to breeze through them quite quickly, most of them. Um, the first is May Grey Sets a Trap by George Simenon. Um, yeah, this one was spoiled for me because I'd already seen it on TV and knew what was going to happen, so I um, didn't enjoy this one as much as I would have liked, uh, but I will be looking out for other May Grey books because I like the character and I'd like to see how it how they play out without having seen them on TV. Um, next is The Meerkats of Summer Farm. This is a true story about uh, a wildlife park um, where two baby meerkats are abandoned by their mother and hand reared by the park owners. Um, it was quite a fun story, but I won't reread it, so it was out. Um, and next is No Longer Strangers by Richard Stoll. Um, this uh, was a book self-published by a guy from my church. Um, it's quite an enjoyable story, quite sweet, um, but not one that I'll reread. You can tell it was written as a hobby, um, but it's quite a cute little story about uh, two people that randomly meet on a train to Scotland and then have an adventure and fall in love. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was quite sweet, um, but again, I won't reread it. Um, next is uh, The Pale Horse by Agatha Christie. My dad gave me a load of old Agatha Christie paperbacks. I'm working my way through them. Um, this was quite an interesting story. It um, is not a Marple or Poirot. The, uh, the main character is Mark Easterbrook, um, and he goes for advice to... Oh, what's her name? Ariadne Oliver. Um, so it's cast as a book in her series. Um, it's quite a clever concept about people seemingly being cursed by these witches and he's trying to investigate. Um, and it was quite clever, um, but um, not the best Agatha Christie I've ever read. And I don't know if you can see, but this book has been quite badly brutalised by whoever owned it before my family. I think my dad probably got it from a charity shop or a jumble sale. Um, so if I ever decide to reread it, I will get a nice copy. Um, next is M Muriel Spark, The Girls of Slender Means. Um, this was, again, quite an enjoyable book. I really enjoyed it when I was reading it, um, but I don't think I'll reread it. It's about uh, a group of girls who uh, live in uh, like a hostel for young women in London. Um, it's very much of its time, but as I say, I quite enjoyed it. Um, but I won't reread it, so off it goes. Um, next is a book that I really did not enjoy. Um, people have tried to get me into this author. This is the second book I've read by her and not enjoyed, so... I probably will call it a day with this one. Um, this is The Gift by Cecilia Rohan. Um, I've also read P.S. I Love You, which I think the main reason I didn't enjoy that one was because it had been overhyped to me. Um, I also don't really enjoy her writing style. Um, this one is a Christmas story about a man who meets a 
tramp and he decides to help out the tramp and the tramp in return gives him a second shot essentially at re-engaging with his family. Um, it was quite a clever concept but I didn't enjoy the execution of it. I don't enjoy her writing style um, and to me the most annoying thing was it was framed as a police officer telling a story to a young lad who's thrown a turkey through his father and stepmother's window on Christmas Day um, because he's angry that his father has left and to me that would have been the more interesting story to tell and I didn't really see the point of framing it with that story without going into the detail of who this lad was and what had happened in his family um, and also the ending of this was hugely disappointing and I got to the end and I was like I can't believe what I've just read that is so frustrating and annoying and really to me wasn't worth pages so um, I'm sure some people I know some people love her writing but I won't be rushing to pick up any more books by Susie Red Hair. Um, and the last book in this section um, of books I'm read but won't reread is Yes Please by Amy Poehler. Um, I love Amy Poehler and I really enjoyed reading this it was really fun um, but again once you've read it once I don't think I'll reread it um, it was fun to hear about some of the different things she's done and how she got her success in life and um, some of the inserts are really fun so there's lots of fun pictures of her and some short motivational quotes I really enjoyed the bits about Parks and Recreation which is one of my favourite TV series um, but as I say I probably won't reread this um, also I got this second hand and there's a bit of damage to it so if I ever do decide to reread it it's also a former library book um, if I ever do decide to reread it I would probably buy a nicer newer copy but I don't think I, I will want to the next lot of books are ones that um, I haven't read and don't think I'll ever get around to reading. Um, basically, I was just trying to clear some space on my shelf and um, yeah, there's no point keeping them if I don't think I'm ever going to get around to them. Some of these were given to me by um, by my dad, I think. Others I got from charity shops or cheap book sales um, because I'm a bit of a an addict to buying books and um, these have been sat on my shelf for years and I just just haven't haven't gotten the time um so well actually the first one is one that I DNF'd in June and um, was given to me by my aunt when she had a clear out it's called Single by Margaret Clarkson I got about halfway through um it's about uh being a Christian and single when you feel like God has maybe promised you that you would get married or you see a lot of your Christian friends getting married but it's quite dated it was published in the 80s um and yeah I got about halfway through and thought you know what this isn't really helping me it's not doing anything for me so um off it goes um most of these books I don't actually really know very much about them other than what it says in the blurb so I'm just gonna brush through them so first is The Double Eagle by James Twining I assume you say that um it's a thriller but I've lost interest since I picked it up I think my dad gave me that one um next one is Shadows in Bronze um by Lindsay Davis. Um, this is some sort of Roman murder mystery which the concept sounds quite interesting but this is uh, from a series and it comes later in the series. I don't have the first one. Not in any rush to go and find the first one um, so I thought I'd give this one up. Um, sorry if you can hear traffic noise. It's really hot here. I've got the windows open and I live on a really busy road so a motorcycle just went past really revving. Um, apologies if you could hear that. The next book was another one my dad gave me. Um, I don't know if he ever read it. I don't think I'll ever read it. It's Inside the Third Reich by Albert Speer. It's a memoir of someone who worked um, in Nazi Germany, um, in the government. And I mean, it does sound quite interesting, but also it's really fat and really heavy. And while I do find stuff to do with the Second World War quite interesting, um, I don't think I'm going to ever want to put myself through actually reading this book, so off it goes. Next is um, one I think was actually my brother's, um, it's The Born Identity by Robert Ludlum. I've seen the films and I'm happy with the fact that I've seen the films, I, I'm not going to read the book. Um, the next two are both Nicholas Sparks ones, uh, Dear John and The Choice. I've read a couple of Nicholas Sparks in the past and 
uh, they're right, just sort of fairly generic romances, um, so I don't think I'll ever get around to those, so off they go. Um, this one again was one my dad gave me, Bad Science by Ben Goldacre, um, which is uh, it's an assessment of what the media tells you about science that isn't necessarily true. So things like um, medicine um, and some of the famous media doctors, that sort of thing. Um, fad diets, placebo effect, that sort of thing. So again, some of it sounds quite interesting, but yeah, I don't know. To me, it looks like it's going to be a bit textbooky. It probably isn't, but uh, I just I don't have time for this. So. Um, the next one is called The Peacemaker by Laurie Copeland and um, this is in the sort of Christian historical romance genre. Um, it came in a collection of books um, that I got about 10 years ago when my brother was crew on the OM ship The Doulos. Um, I'll tell you more about OM at some point I'm sure. Um, and yeah, I, d I, I don't really love the genre um i know some people really do but yeah for me i'm not you know i'm not gonna read it it's fine. um i haven't read it in 10 years i'm not gonna read it now and the final book uh, is double felt by lionel shriver um now i read we need to talk about kevin when i was a teenager and really really loved it i picked this one up because of how much i loved that um but actually rereading the the blurb it's about tennis players which I actually do really love tennis but just the story doesn't really interest me and also Lionel Shriver recently made some really dubious comments about uh, diversity in publishing and I've just lost a lot of respect for her as a result so this one goes. So that is my unhaul, um, let me know in the comments if you think I should actually be keeping any of those, if any of those are your favourite book tell me why you love it and you might persuade me to keep it. I can't promise. Um, please chat to me down in the comments below. Um, subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video. Um, you can also find some of my social media details down below as well. Um, I'm on Twitter and uh, on Goodreads and I also have a blog uh, which I don't update very often but I'm going to start trying to do that more often now so please have a look at those if you're interested and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!